I know it has been so long since I have brought an episode of IT Certification Weekly to you, and I apologize for that. I did take a nice extended holiday from social media, and now I'm back and all fired up. And one of the things I wanted to do with this episode is I wanted to make sure I start doing something with these episodes that was part of my original concept, and that is teach you something related to IT certification that is going to have an effect potentially on many different certification exams across many different vendors. In more simple terms, stuff that we have to learn for a wide variety of disciplines. And so we pick up with this episode and the NISTS, the National Institute of Standards and Technology here in the United States, their classic five points regarding what is it that makes cloud cloud. So I don't memorize much, you know I'm really adverse to memorization, but this is one that I've taught so many times and I find it so interesting that I do have these five points memorized. Let's go ahead and utilize Amazon Web Services as a way to talk through these five definitions of cloud per the NIST. And remember, this isn't a definition of public cloud, so we shouldn't be constraining ourselves to that concept. We could be dealing with private cloud here, hybrid cloud. The deployment model is not relevant. What makes cloud cloud is, for example, the first definition of broad network access. So cloud technology will typically feature broad network access, and we are reminded of that when we are in AWS and we drop the region selection option down and we see all of these regions across the globe that we could build AWS infrastructures within. So if most of our customers are near Mumbai, I can switch into the Mumbai region and I can start building the cloud resources in that region. So very, very exciting, this broad network access that tends to make cloud cloud. Remember now, this isn't suggesting that we have no security. So it's not like, oh yeah, everything's like read available to everyone. No, we're gonna have intense security, but it's just great that if we want to provide that access to everyone all over the globe, we're gonna have the capabilities to do that potentially. The second definition point is on-demand self-service. And boy, do we see that when we are working in something like public cloud. So if I say EC2, I can go to the EC2 dashboard, which of course represents virtual machines for us in AWS. And I can see that I've got three Linux nodes here all stopped. But if I wanted to just point and click and launch a new instance, I could be up and running with that in just a matter of moments. So on demand, we can provision new resources without going through any wait period or any kind of contractual negotiation. And what's beautiful is we can uh, self-service that. So I don't call anyone at AWS and say, uh, yeah, I need another Linux instance. We just point, click, and make it happen. Now, a related definitional point here, our third point is resource pooling tends to make cloud cloud. And if we just step through the motions here, I'll pretend I'm just gonna be building this Ubuntu box. Notice it's gonna give us an amount, we can select an amount of virtual CPUs and memory, but when we go into the instance details, you notice this option right here, the default tenancy is to run a shared hardware instance. So we will have our virtual machine nestled on a hardware host along with other AWS customers' virtual machines. We could pay extra and we could say, I want a dedicated host. I wanna launch this instance on a dedicated host. We would pay extra for that, but one of the great things about cloud is this resource pooling. 
where we can have a whole bunch of hardware in place on a physical host, and then we can virtualize that and offer the multi-tenancy to multiple customers. Or if we're servicing our own enterprise with private cloud, those multiple customers might be different departments in your organization. Another big one is elasticity. And elasticity is really made possible thanks to technologies that exist within cloud like auto scaling. So notice here in AWS, there is this auto scaling option and we launch configuration templates and we have the ability, it's so amazing to scale both up and down or often described as scale up and down or in and out as far as horizontal versus vertical type scaling. And this is just, it's, it's one of the most exciting features. If you're just starting out and your web-based business doesn't have a lot of traffic, well, you might be fine with one web server, but the second you start to grow or maybe you wanna locate uh, web servers in different regions, you want to be able to scale up and scale down. Remember, for the longest time, we were really interested in scalability in information technology, and this just simply says we want to be able to grow the IT resources in architecture as demand grows, but it doesn't say anything about going the other direction, and that's what elasticity brings to the equation. We can often have our cloud resources automated so that they expand when there's demand and they contract when there isn't demand. This adds up for a remarkable cost savings. And speaking of costs, that brings us to our last component of our five components in the NIST definition of cloud, and that is measured service. And that sure is available to you in public cloud implementations. If I go into my billing dashboard, for example, we're going to see that there is a cost explorer. But even just on the base dashboard here, you can see that I'm getting a look at what are my current monthly costs and how does that breakdown work out? What am I spending my money on in AWS? and notice how accessible this information is. And it really is a visual reminder and representation that AWS is carefully measuring the services that we consume so they can turn around and bill us. Notice this is an example of where we have operational expender, expenditures in IT, and that's gonna be like that monthly pay as you go and pay for what you use, like an electric bill, like the utility bills that we often get, and this is a remarkable advantage to cloud, and as we've discussed, measured services is one of those NIST characteristics. So thank you so much for joining me in this episode. I hope you love this format. I will occasionally be doing this where we just focus in on something you can learn that's going to apply in certification exam after certification exam across many different vendors. Thank you.